Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yoshiake Abe. I'm an advisor to the U.S. Japan Research Institute. My job is to welcome all of you here to hear important speeches and discussions. U.S. Japan Research Institute is an NPO in Washington, D.C., and formally established about two years ago. We have been trying to use this kind of opportunities to explain what's going on in Japan and what's going on in relationship between the United States and Asia, including Japan, particularly U.S. and Japan. And if possible, we are sending our messages to the U.S. audiences and Japan also what kind of approach we should take, what kind of opinion we are forming. And today's event is one of the series of those efforts. And for that, I would like to introduce uh, Professor Nakayama for today's session. Professor Nakayama. Uh, good morning, everybody. And thank you very much, Professor Abe, for your very kind invitation. Well, uh, this seminar deals with implications and the countermeasures and so on was a great East Japan earthquake, which we experienced on the 11th of March this year. And the great East Japan earthquake has tragically exposed the vulnerability of Japanese society system, which we Japanese have long taken for granted. And uh, so this seminar will analyze the mechanism behind each of the vulnerabilities, and that we try to identify any countermeasures that are ready and available, as well as those which are not available. And uh, this still ongoing catastrophe will serve for us as a once-in-a-generation kind of opportunity, I would say opportunity, for the global community to yield critical lessons for the future. And having said that, I have four speakers uh, for this session and one commentator. And uh, you will listen to four presentations, one after another. And then I will ask our guest commentator for his comment. And then I will open the floor for questions, answers, and comments. Having said that, without any delay, I will ask the first speaker, Dr. Ishwatari, for his presentation. And uh, each speaker is supposed to tell about themselves at the beginning, what kind of people are you, you are, and what kind of career, etc. you have experienced. The pleasure to hear from you. I'm Ishiwatari from JICA, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Uh, I joined JICA six years ago as a senior advisor in disaster management. Uh, before joining JICA, I worked at uh, the government, Ministry of Infrastructure, and uh, I worked overseas and uh, inside Japan as a disaster management specialist. Uh, today, my presentation will cover how did Japanese technology work? And four months already passed after the quake and the tsunami on March 11th. And you may have imagined that uh, Japan has high technology, like Sony, Toyota, Panasonic. And also, we have uh, advanced technology in disaster management system, uh, like high dikes, construction dikes, or precise simulation models and advanced, sophisticated early warning system. So your simple question would be, uh, how did technology function? Uh, already, Japanese agencies started their review process. Well, based on such a review, I would like to see what happened on March 11th.
Okay, first,、uh, you may consider Japan is a tiny, small island. But actually, it's not so small.、Uh, this is the case Tokyo here, Fukushima here, and this is a devastated area. This l e n g t h would be a some、uh, 300 miles. Comparing the US, well, it's、uh, longer than New York and Boston, this thing. And, but、uh, shorter than Boston and Washington.、Uh, you can see、uh, the scale of、uh, disasters of this Japan.、Uh, this is the record of tsunami height. In some areas, tsunami reached 40 meters. In some areas, this plain area, tsunami height is 20 meters. And this Fukushima area is 10 meters.、Uh, even though there are no damage, but、uh, tsunami reached Tokyo in this area. Okay, so, I'd like to review chronologically what happened and how Japanese disaster management worked. First, I'll back to 100 years ago. This area has suffered from tsunami repeatedly. And this、uh, Yoshihama town severely damaged over 100 years ago. And people decided to move to higher land. They live in this、uh, higher land. And the lower area they utilize for agricultural production. This tsunami came, this lower land, fully flooded. However, since they moved to higher area,、uh, these houses are not damaged. And another case,、uh, Nakayama sensei mentioned the vulnerability.、Uh, I'd like to explain some vulnerability. This area is actually 100 years ago. Very poor area, one of the poorest areas in Japan. And in Japanese, we say it's a cold, cold village.、Uh, so at that time,、uh, this is a very rural fishery town. For the last 100 years, for the last 100 years population was increased three times. And in this Kesenuma city, population increased three times at peak. And what happened? They developed lower land and they lived in this area. This is the 100 years ago, and this is the current situation. Vulnerability definitely increased for the last 100 years, and they are waiting for another tsunami. And、uh, back to one year ago, last year, our government released earthquake prediction. For example, in Tokyo, <laughs> Within 30 years, magnitude seven scale earthquake will happen、uh, with probability 70%. So please be careful you come to next time to Tokyo. <laughs> you may have time to and as such, they predicted throughout the country. And how predicted? For this tsunami of Hokkaido earthquake,、uh, they predicted 99% definitely happen. It's a good prediction. However, they predicted <coughs> magnitude 8. And this time, magnitude was 9. Difference is only one magnitude 8 and magnitude 9. But this difference is 30 times. Energy difference is 30 times. So they predicted probability, but、uh, they predicted smaller pathway. And the Fukushima area, they say only 7%. So, 7% is,、uh, as you can see, a very low probability. So, in Fukushima area, they could not、uh, collect it. And this is a tsunami height. Because their prediction for earthquake is、uh, lo- smaller than the actual one.、Uh, so, they, this is observed data, and they are predicted data. As you can see, Tsunami height also predicted lower. So,、uh, 2 p.m., 46 minutes, 11th March, earthquake happened. Big turmoil attacked this area. This is a Kobe earthquake 15 years ago. We experienced how highway collapsed, railway damage, Shinkansen stopped. Based on such experience, they conducted such a reinforcement of the infrastructure. This time, not so big damage reported by Taiwan. 
and this is a Uredas system. And they detect first wave and make stop Shinkansen. Actually, Shinkansen bread train running with uh, 270 kilometers per hour in this area, but safely stopped because of this Uredas system. So, against earthquake, Japanese mechanism, Japanese disaster management, our work worked well. And at that time, seabed lifted up and the uh, sea, sea water body moved to Japan. So, how was the countermeasures for that? First, in this area, 300 kilometers dikes were constructed to protect these areas, like this one. Uh, as you can see, seaside were damaged. However, this town side were well protected. If tsunami is lower, like perfectly function and safely protect these areas. And uh, this is the highway. Highway function, mountain, mounted uh, highway function as a second type. This is a second, uh, this is a highway. And the uh, seaside fully flooded. However, this highway protected this town area. So this mount highway function. Uh, this is dike height and tsunami height. Uh, as you can see, dike height is uh, some uh, 50 meters highest. But as I, I explained, tsunami height is much higher in most of cases. Uh, therefore, uh, Tsunami dikes protected some area and protected, well, or weakened tsunami strength and uh, provide some leading time for evacuation. However, in this area, they could not perfectly protect the town. This is a case in Fukushima power plant. And they constructed five meter high dikes, but actually tsunami was uh, over 10 meters. Okay, even so, uh, Dyke could not protect our town. We have early warning system and evacuation system. <coughs> How this system function? Uh, this is a tsunami warning system. Net agency has uh, 600 monitoring stations for earthquake and set, uh, 80 observation stations for tsunami. This information in real time to transfer to headquarters and they issue tsunami within three minutes. They could issue tsunami warning within three minutes. As when it happened to, to, to 46 and issued to 49 as planned, as prepared. However, it's a crucial point. They say tsunami height is three meter height. Three meters down uh, here. So, well, you may feel three meter tsunami I can escape or just walk. But actually, this 30 minutes later, net agency observed higher tsunami offshore. And uh, 45 minutes later, they observed on the shore, uh, on the seaside, uh, 10 meters high. So they devised tsunami warning 6 meters and 10 meters. But during this time, e electricity cut and people started evacuation. Well, it's not sure everybody can receive this updated work information. So how people hear this tsunami one? I want to show some uh, video. This is a Minami Sandy town, and uh, yeah, with silent, they are announcing for people. And uh, this is a lady who are announcing, just married one year ago. <laughs> Sorry, Japanese. Uh, she, she's saying, uh, please escape immediately to Haya. And it's now in Haya. It's a little bit of 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 a